Hey, good morning. I had a quite a few, quite a few comments yesterday that people rather enjoyed the tick. I pronounced his name wrong yesterday. Tick knock pun reading and didn't mind the pictures. So I'm just going to carry on a bit with what he was talking about yesterday. And as always, I have to fiddle around with this. I'd still be thrilled if somebody showed me how to do this better. Okay, that's kind of where I left off with pictures yesterday. Don't worry, I have like 82,000 pictures, so uh, we won't run out. With mindful breathing, you can recognize the presence of a painful feeling, just like an older sibling greets an, a younger sibling. You can say, hello, my suffering. I know you are there. In this way, the energy of mindfulness keeps us from being overwhelmed by painful feelings. We can even smile to our suffering and say, good morning, my pain, my sorrow, my fear. I see you. I am here. Don't worry. Embracing suffering. If we let the suffering come up and just take over our mind, we can be quickly overwhelmed by it. So we, ha so we have to invite another energy to come up at the same time, the energy of mindfulness. The function of mindfulness is first to recognize the suffering and then to take care of the suffering. The work of mindfulness is to first recognize the suffering and the second to embrace it. A mother taking care of a crying baby naturally will take the child into her arms without suppressing it, judging it, or ignoring the crying. Mindfulness is like that mother, recognizing and embracing suffering without judgment. So the practice is not to fight or suppress the feeling, but rather to cradle it with a lot of tenderness. When a mother embraces her child, that energy of tenderness begins to penetrate into the body of the child. Even if the mother doesn't understand at first why the child is suffering and why she needs some time to find out what the difficulty is, just her act of taking the child into her arms with tenderness can already bring relief. If we can recognize and cradle this suffering while we breathe mindfully, there is relief already. Embracing our suffering may, see, may seem to be the opposite of what we want to do, especially if our suffering is very large, as with depression. Depression is one of the most widespread forms of suffering in our time. It can take away our peace, our joy, our stability, and even our ability to eat, move about, or do simple tasks. It can seem insurmountable, and we may think that the only thing we can do is either run away from it or give in to it. But non-judgmentally recognizing and embracing this great suffering is not at all the same thing as giving in to it. Once you have offered your acknowledgement and care to this suffering, it naturally will become less impenetrable and more workable. And then you have the chance to look into it deeply with kindness, but still always with a solid ground of mindful breathing to support you and find out why it has come to you. It is trying to get your attention, to tell you something. And now you can take the opportunity to listen. You can ask someone to look with you, a teacher, a friend, a psychotherapist, whether alone or together with your friends. You can explore what kind of roots it has and what nutriments and habits of consumption have been feeding your sorrow. You can discover how through looking deeply you can transform this organic garbage into compost, which will then, which, sorry, which in turn may become many beautiful flowers of understanding, compassion, and joy. The bell. Even with the best intention and even with the longstanding mindfulness practice, we all have the tendency to run into the future or go back into the past to search for happiness el elsewhere. The bell of mindfulness, whether it is an actual bell or some other sound, is a wonderful reminder to come back to ourselves, to come back to life here in the present moment.
The sound of the bell is the voice of the Buddha within. Every one of us has a Buddha nature, the capacity for compassion and clear understanding within us. So when we hear the sound of the bell, if we, practice, if we are practicing mindfulness, we can respond to that intervention with respect and appreciation. In my tradition, every time we hear the bell, we pause. We stop moving, talking, and thinking. We listen to the voice of the heart. We don't say that we hit the bell or strike the bell. Rather, we say we invite the bell to sound. I think the dog barking at me may be a bell. Just hang on. Just breathe while, I, while I'm going. I'll be right back. Sorry, I dropped the phone. Chanel had to come in to see what I was doing. And a friend of mine the other day was talking about, you know, walking by a rock. And every time you see that rock, it can bring you back to the present. We don't say that we hit the bell or strike the bell. Rather, we say we invite the bell to sound because the bell is a friend, an enlightened friend that helps to wake us up and guides us home to ourselves. Gentleness and nonviolence are characteristics of the sound of the bell. It is the sound, the, its sound is gentle, but very powerful. When you hear the sound of the bell, take the opportunity to come home to yourself and enjoy your breathing. Take a few moments to inhale and exhale deeply and touch a little happiness. If you want to experience what the end of suffering will, will feel like it is in the here and now with this breath. If you want peace, it is right here. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I smile. I'll leave it there for today. Thank you. So I'll have to stop that. And I'm going to say goodbye and end recording.